perfect. We're going. Well, hello everyone. We are here today with Jean-Pierre uh, and we're going to ask him a few questions. Uh, Jean-Pierre, we know that you grew up in New York. Uh, how did that influence your art and your life? Tell us. Yeah, well, uh, growing up in New York was kind of fantastic, especially, <laughs> you know, I was born in 73 and got to, you know, got some roller skates underneath me by 79, 80. Uh, Keith Haring was working in the city along with um, Warhol and Basquiat. They were all alive, they were all doing their thing. And as a little boy, just that was, you know, had a, had a gear towards the creative. I got to roam the city around on roller skates and witness um, the, the birth of hip hop really happened. The mm -hmm. boom boxes, the graffiti art on the walls, and mm -hmm. that was all starting to to happen all around me and and then at the same time traveling into the East Village, you know, there's the whole punk rock thing that's coming over from Britain and having its influence on, on the US through New York. So um, it's a lot to take in. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it, it, it is sound a little overwhelming, but at the same time when you're young you definitely just uh, like a sponge. Yeah. You take it all in and yeah. get inspired. And I think I think how the work, I think how it's transferred to my work is um, I love I love the you know the the subways and and the and the the streets. There's a certain street ethic to my work that I really love. The the tearing up posters and the collage that I do is a lot inspired from uh, the subways and from billboards that just had layer after layer put mm -hmm. up and then scribbled and and um, so part of me seeks to bring that or have that be present in in the work that I create because it feels like. Um, feels like home, you know. Mm -hmm. Feels like a, mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, yeah. I feel like our uh, younger inspirations are the strongest ones, usually, right? Perhaps yes. Yeah. The impressions that we have from each other. Formative years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think they like the most bright in the sense. But um, well, tell us the story when and why you decide art is your thing. Um. It was um, there was a couple there was a couple of moments. Um, I was painting when I was, I think I was four and a half in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. My teacher provided us you know newsprint and easels, smocks, uh, tempura paints, and I just remember like loving it, like mm -hmm. totally going off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there was a, a clear thing there. And then I remember, you know, uh, before you know before I, I lived in New York City, I had lived, I was born in New York City, but I had lived in. I'd lived in foster care for a while. It's a little emotional. I'm still. Um. But uh, coming out of foster care uh, and those traumatic experiences that I had there, um, I had lots of process as a little kid. And I would be in my daycare, I remember, in the summertime. And I remember I just wanted to draw. And some of the teachers would be like, okay, it's time to play with blocks now, or it's time to like. And I remember another teacher just being like, yo. We just let him draw sometimes. Mm -hmm. We just, and I remember just drawing for a couple of days of just, wow. and it was helping me. Mm -hmm. And eventually I moved on to other, you know, I was like, I'm gonna go play with blocks now or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. from, you know, that's the first time I remember it being a therapeutic tool or, mm -hmm. you know, something to soothe me, um, something to help me integrate. Definitely. So that, that happened early. Um, when I was seven, I, told my mother that I wanted to be an artist mm -hmm. uh, and she reminded me that of that much years later when I called and was like I'm an artist now uh -huh. and she was like you always wanted to be and I was like I did and I had mm -hmm. forgot and she reminded me and I was like oh wow that's right it's crazy you get some memories they just yeah so it was it was really early on I, I you know I had the impetus I didn't have um paints or anything available to me throughout my high school years uh you know, Ronald Reagan was president in the United States and he really clenched down on the budget and there really wasn't much for art in the schools that I went to. Uh, but right after, immediately after high school, um, I broke my foot, or I twisted my ankle. <laughs> it cracks right now. I twisted my ankle and my friend was like, you know, they were all going out skateboarding and I was like so bummed. He's like, hey, you know, when I'm staying home and I have to stay home, this is what I do. And he gave me this paint set. Never stopped painting. Uh -huh. It was just like oh, that day. Awesome. At the end of the day, I was like, "Well, this never stops." That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, uh, coming back to now, um, Jean Pierre, these days, uh, do you have uh, any 
social message in your in your work and in your art? Yeah. Um, I do. I it feels like it's bigger than a social message. Um, I sometimes feel like it's a it's a social, spiritual, emotional message. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like the development of humanity is really like how are we human and how are we human together in a way that works mm -hmm. is a question that is constantly on my mind. Mm -hmm. um, having been a part of humanity in ways that don't work, um, mm -hmm. you know, for, for so long. Uh, so it's, it's a question that, that gets a lot of uh, attention mm -hmm. in, in, in my soul mm -hmm. and then in my heart. So that transfers into my work, you know, maybe not seeking to answer the question, but maybe seeking to ask it more broadly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like the social part is a part of it, right? Part of the question. De the question. Definitely, the, definitely the social part. But I think that maybe what I struggle is to how, you know, I, I don't want to make it about this abstract, like, you know, thing that we do, you know, outside of the home or outside of us. I feel like uh, the first place where social um, issues are bridged are very personal. Mm -hmm. Right, they're between. Mm -hmm. It's between us and God, or us mm -hmm. and our our philosophy. That first bridge is before we're able to even cognate, you know, shifting of our viewpoints, and you know, and then maybe later doing work with our hands or with mm -hmm. our mouth that that reflects the change. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to to go, you know, that goes on before we get to that change part. And I, I don't want to overlook that in my work. I want to drive it home to the you know to the personal. Got you, got you. Well, um, especially now in our times of COVID and Black Lives Matter, uh, there's a, there are a lot of many social questions, right? Sure. That've been asked, and um, uh, I wanted to ask you how did COVID nineteen affected your work, and if indeed, I'm sure we all affected and have to adjust and adapt in a certain way. Sure, sure. Well, it rocked me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the way it rocked a lot of people. Uh, it gave me a lot more time in the studio, but at the same time, it gave me a lot more uncertainty. Um, it had me start to examine, you know, what, what's really important um, in, a, in a deeper way. Uh, it also uh, isolated me, uh, so I was left to stew with a lot of, um, w you know, without the, uh, the different things that I might do, distractions or even um, connections that I might go to in order to settle myself and to like, you know, keep my show going. Uh, all that was stripped of me as every, it was for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I got to face um, myself, like my psyche, my monster, my, uh, <laughs> my monster, my delicate <laughs> victim, my savior, my all the things, my misogynist, my racist, my everything. I got to be- All the colors. All the, every, all all the glory the and all the pain, all the, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I think we all, all went through that, and so I'm not sure, if, um, you know, what it's been like for, you know, the rest of America or for the rest of artists or the rest of the world. But I think that um, the particular focus that I have in my work, and I think that some artists have in their work, really uh, drove that process uh, deeper, and it, it, it's been, um, I would say, harrowing for me in a way. Uh, but uh, like all things that um, shake your foundation. Um, eventually, there comes the time to, to you know to embrace the shake and to see what has fallen that wasn't you know s sturdy mm -hmm. and stable and think mm -hmm. about how to yeah, it's so how to rebuild in a you know way that's more uh, sustainable not just for you but for your community and, mm -hmm. and for the world at large. So, um, and I, I think that I'm doing that personal work as much as as I feel like I'm also doing that in the world. Like how do we how do we socially distance these art shows and how, how do we you know how do we get the work to people but also like. Yeah, there's so many things to figure out right now for all of us. It was right? big, and it's been How big, and it's still big. It, it is Sorry. still big, I agree. It yeah. is still big. Uh, what about Black Lives Matter movement? Uh, are you participating in any uh, thing actively or, or participated, yeah. per se? Yeah, so COVID was here, and, and one of the things that happened uh, historically, I think it was in the 1800, there was like another flu. Um, I don't have all the details, but it, it was during that pandemic and that shutdown of America that people really came out in force in, around social things. So the thing about a pandemic and the quarantine is that it really puts the social pressure onto these issues. Oh, sure. So when George Floyd died, um, the impact uh, and the people that you know came out, especially white people coming out, uh, the, the 
the huge surge of support and uh, readiness that people had to see a different day with that death versus Felinda Castillo or Michael Brown mm -hmm. or you know the numerous others, mm -hmm. um, I, I think was tied to the pandemic. Right? Definitely so. Yeah. yeah. Well, people were already on edge. Right, and right, and already yeah. pressurized, yeah. <laughs> So when that pressure came on, on top of the, you know, the economic mm -hmm. pressure and the, the health pressure, it um, became too much for people to hold and people, uh, you know, got active and people got, um, you know, got angry and got active about it, uh, including uh, a large number, new number of white people and myself as a mixed race uh, person, I had done some work with the, um, the Black, uh, Black Lives Matter th through the Austin Justice Coalition for years uh, at seemingly like a lower level and it definitely like cranked, mm -hmm. cranked the heat and I was highly involved with them over the, um, over the summer and plan to continue, um, you know, to continue that involvement. Uh, social change is, mm -hmm. is at the, you know, is, it's one of the things I desire most in life. Beautiful, no, me too. As you said, certain things are on your mind all the time, and I feel the same way, to be honest with you. I always ask those questions, and uh, how can we make this a little better, you know, for everyone? So, um, I understand totally. Um, well, as an artist, uh, I consider artists being problem solvers, right? Do you have any trick to uh, push yourself into creating, to find those inspiration channels and make, uh, make them? Get the work done. It's yeah. Um, so one of my biggest tricks is leaving the house early in the morning mm -hmm. and coming mm -hmm. back with a cup of coffee. Healthy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so there's something that for me uh, because I have my studios at home. There's something about um, coming back in with cup, like coming back to like I'm in at work. Oh, here we to go. Workspace. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, instead of trying to like go from, you know, getting ready for work and being in the home and, uh, and then, you know, just mm -hmm. starting to get to it. There's something about that, that break mm -hmm. that um, I've learned has done, it does something for me. Mm -hmm. uh, others, I, I'm not sure how they do it, but it does something for me. So that's, that's one way. Uh, also exercise, um, you know, the better I feel, uh, the, the, the longer I could last in the studio. It's, uh, it's a known for sure. Exercise is probably the best thing yeah. for ourselves, right? Yeah. And eating, uh, you know, um, you know, just sitting, you know, the better I live my life and, you know, and, and then it becomes about, um, you know, how there becomes this uh, pressure, you know, like personal pressure to perform, uh, to get all this done, to make this work and to, you know, to glean the self and, you know, be within vision, but then also, you know, put it down on, into surface, you know, so being a person of, of both, you know, vision and also, you know, physical work and, you know, have that, you know, continually happen is a, is a tall order. Mm -hmm. And I think there's, uh, I put pressure on myself, uh, because for, for numerous reasons I won't even get into, but I, I, I tend to really hold myself to a certain, um, a certain can, a certain, uh, pace and a certain, uh, bar mm -hmm. and it can be stressful. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that even, that, that stress that I'm, you know, that I'm invoking to, you know, to get things done, to, um, to really temper that with uh, being able to chill the fuck out and like breathe, no, especially embrace for you, children, you embrace. In the creative field, right? <sighs> Just uh, working out and stay healthy, maybe not enough, right? Yeah. You have to find those creative channels and inspirations. And yeah. And slow, just slow down. Like sometimes, mm -hmm. just slow down. Just embrace oh, a little challenge. Okay, we don't have to, you know, learn to like when to be in first gear, when to bring into fourth gear, you know. And then it's like, okay, I'm back in the house with the kids. Okay, well, we're, we're, we're one first mm -hmm. gear. Okay, what, what are all the needs, you know, mm -hmm. and, and make sure that that life is good because um, when we're not taking, you know, care of like those responsibilities or, or basic responsibilities, mm -hmm. then you know, when it's time for fifth gear, it's like you don't, you know, mm -hmm. your tires aren't screwed on or whatever. For sure, for sure. Well. Um and I have a last question to you. Uh, as an artist, uh, how do you view social media? It's a question and topic that concerns a lot of artists right now. There are mixed reviews. <laughs> yeah, um, I can't say I can't say I hate it. I can't, you know, um, I can say I love it. Uh, I think it's great, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I see so much. Um, I get really, I get really inspired and really like, wow, like you know, it blows my mind. I also see a lot of what I don't want to do, 
mm -hmm. uh, that I might have let myself. I might have let myself down and been like, yeah, oh, hell no. Okay, good. It's love hate relationship. <laughs> Plenty of people taking care of that, you know. Um, so I, I think that it, it gives us kind of a, you know, uh, a scope, you know, on on what other people are doing. But at the same time, you know, Prince never listened to other people's music. Mm -hmm. Prince only listened to his own music because he didn't want um, his music to to start to take off. He didn't want to be influenced. He's like, mm -hmm. what I have is is beautiful and precious and I don't want it to get mm -hmm. you know mixed in and I don't know that I have that level of confidence mm -hmm. uh, that he has uh, or that he had and I'm sure he still has wherever, wherever he might be um, but I think I strive to have that level mm -hmm. of, of confidence and maybe there'll be a day where um, you know my my take on social media will change and I'll be like well it's good for everyone else but I'm not looking at any images but my own now well I feel like it's a fine balance between uh, using uh, social media is a tool and being used by it, right? Right. <laughs> so you have to f uh, walk that line and be uh, just in a good mind and right. spirits and make sure that you're keeping it balanced. Right? Yeah, we're using it as the as the influencer versus mm -hmm. the as the influence, mm -hmm. and you know, I I walk that line too. Mm -hmm. I actually my social all my social media accounts are in one little bubble on my phone, mm -hmm. and the name of the bubble is influence. Uh -huh. You know, and well, it's like, it's, what am I going to do? The influence, or am I going to influence that? I love that? that. Yeah. I should organize it that way too. Yeah. <laughs> because it's all spread out. Um, well, Jean-Pierre, thank you so much. It was a great conversation and I'm uh, very fascinated and impressed. And uh, I think we're going to see Jean-Pierre art very soon at uh, Jonathan's studio. Yeah, and so the social link, uh, social media link is mm -hmm. Art of Jean-Pierre and that's across mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, uh, you know, wherever, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. everywhere, Tinder, like Art of Jean Pierre, <laughs> one, one brand, all across. Oh, uh, well, check it out, Art of Jean Pierre, and stay tuned for more information. Bye.